I do three main things. Uh, as a professor, I carry out research uh, into the causes of mental health problems and use those insights to develop better treatments. As a clinician, uh, I see patients in the NHS, uh, often with the most complex problems, and test out new face-to-face -face therapies. And I also uh, set up a University of Oxford spin-out company, Oxford VR, to try to get the best psychological treatments to as many people as possible. And there are very powerful psychological treatments. If you see the right therapist doing the right treatment, it can be transformative for many mental health conditions. So, for example, with social anxiety disorder, of course, every year, if you don't get any help, around 7% of people recover. If you get standard psychological therapy, about 40% of people recover. Get medication, about half of people recover. But if you get a specialised form of cognitive therapy that was developed in Oxford, in John's department, about three quarters of people recover. Yet every year, only about 2% of people with social anxiety disorder get the very best treatment. And what I think is that you can use immersive virtual reality, VR, to enable millions worldwide to get the best psychological treatment. Why do I think that? Well, fundamentally, because I think mental health problems are inseparable from the environment, which is exactly what Kath has been saying. If you have a fear of public speaking, it's being in front of an audience. If you have a fear of heights, it's walking near heights. If it's alcohol, it's resisting those cravings around it. If you have claustrophobia, it's about being tight and closed spaces are difficult. You know when you've overcome a problem, when you think, feel, and behave differently in those situations that used to trouble them. And that's where VR comes in. Because you can put on a headset, and enter these troubling situations. And the beauty is, if, because you know it's not real, you can try things differently, and the learning you make transfers out into the real world. Now, what I've done with the support of John and others in the department is, for the first time, really automate the provision of the best psychological treatments in VR. And that's meant to, have to uh, develop a virtual therapist um, and here's a snatch of a uh, therapist here. Each session should last about 30 minutes in total. My job is to guide you through the various activities. So you'll be seeing a lot of me over the coming sessions. And the first demonstrator I did that you can automate psychological treatment successfully in VR is with fear of heights. And I'll give you a sort of before and after the VR treatment uh, video now. This is Richard, before therapy, and uh, he was asked to go and stand near the balcony there, which uh, was terribly difficult for him. And he couldn't do it. He came in and he had six half an hour VR therapies here going across a virtual uh, route bridge. And after therapy, back to the balcony. Look at that nonchalance. <laughs> this, uh this would have been simply impossible three months ago. Uh, the, it would have been total avoidance. I, I wouldn't even have attempted this. And let me also show you uh, Faye, uh, who had a less severe fear of heights, but it meant that she couldn't go on uh, escalators, as you're about to see. Yeah, see, I can't do it. You've now completed all the tasks on this floor. She did all the therapy in one morning. Do you feel safer around heights than you did when we first arrived on this floor? This is fine. I can't believe it. It's really, really weird. 
It's fine. I don't even need to hold on. <laughs> That's so weird. Of course, we carried out a randomised controlled clinical trial uh, with 100 people who, on average, had their fear of heights that had them for 30 years. And as you can see, the VR treatment group, substantial reductions. The average reduction in fear of heights was 68%. It's a huge clinical effect. But my ambitions have, have not been just to develop treatments for fear of heights. It's about developing uh, treatments for many other mental health conditions. And that's intensive work. Because as William was highlighting, you need the best psychological science there. You also need to, hi to uh, get the synergy also with the patient view. Um, and those, uh, the picture there is of uh, some of the patients advising us in the Game Change Project, a treatment for schizophrenia. You need to have those elements working with people who are in the games industry, developing the software. We go through all the medical device regulations. We carry out the clinical trials. And we also work out how you get this on the ground in clinical services. Currently developing automated psychological treatment through VR for schizophrenia. We're working on uh, a treatment for depression and others too. And uh, I'll leave you with one example that we're doing, which is uh, a treatment uh, for adolescents for social anxiety. I'll give you a sneak preview of some of this. Um, they go into difficult social situations, such as having to give a speech in front of a, a rather difficult audience of their peers. <laughs> All practice archery in front of a difficult audience. So that's the potential promise of VR for mental health.